Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and made our way through the operating room. That room was kind of depressing. It was almost kind of funny at first, but by the end, Clover stated that she thought her brother might be dead and that she was going to be killed next. Which... It's a very sad note to end off the room on, so we're kind of just begrudgingly making our way through the hallway. Anyways, let's continue. They left the operating room. The hallway took them around several corners and past several doors, but they were all locked. Until at last, and the final door was hidden in a corner of the hallway. Junpei grabbed the handle. As he made to push it open, a voice stopped him. The voice came from behind him and belonged to neither Seven nor Clover. Jumpy! He spun around. He saw someone running toward him from the other end of the hallway. There were three people coming toward Junpei and his companions. Santa, Lotus, and June. They pulled up short in front of Junpei, breathing hard. Whoa! What the hell is this? What are you doing here? What? We didn't... Before he could finish, Clover spoke. Hey guys, could you come take a look at this? She was standing near the end of a small hallway that branched off to the right. The rest of them ran over to her, curious as to what she'd found. There was something on the wall at the end of the hallway. Map of the ship's interior. It said Sea Deck in the upper left corner. It was, they assumed, a map to the floor they were on. Door 7 and... Door 8. The map confirmed what they already knew. Both doors eventually led to the hallway where they had found themselves. In fact... Yeah, isn't that exactly what I said? We aren't gonna be split up permanently till we find door 9. We might get separated for a while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we won't be able to open door 9. That's how the nonary game works. Junpei looked at the map of the ship's interior again. As he looked more closely, his surprise and excitement gave way to his weariness. One by one, the others saw what he'd seen. They moved as one for the door. He pulled the map of the ship's interior off the wall put it in his pocket, and followed the others. The six of them stood in front of the door, arrayed in a semicircle. Santa stepped forward. He took hold of the door and spoke without looking back at the other five. Ready? I'm gonna open it. Slowly, all five nodded their silent assent. With a deep breath, Santa threw open the door. They poured through the doorway and into the room. Even without looking around, each one of them knew where they were. They were just where the map had said they would be. The same room they'd been in not so very long ago. The tremendous central hospital, with empty beds from wall to wall. I see. I believe I understand what you're saying. The six of you split into two teams and went through doors seven and eight. You solved the puzzles in the operating room and the laboratory, and then met one another in the hallway after opening your respective locked doors. It looked, it looked like anyone might, after only just waking up, but it seemed that his brain was working as well as ever. He managed to grasp, summarize, and understand each team's report. At any rate, I feel a bit silly for my little show of altruism. I'm sure you'll be back for me. I did hope you'd come back, but I confess I didn't think you'd be back so soon. Ace shook his head with a rueful smile. Well, we saw each other again and we ain't dead, so I say that's good enough. Seven smiled. Anyway, I say we ought to get out of this creepy old place. We found the key we need. The key? Ain't that what I just said? I'm talking about the Jupiter key. We found it in the operating room. Right, Junpei? Junpei nodded. Ah, the solar system keys. Actually, we found one in the laboratory, too. 
Here, the earth key. Lotus dug out a still warm key with an earth symbol on it. I might lose it. It's probably better if you hold on to it. That way it won't be my fault if it gets lost. And with that, she pressed it into Junpei's hand. He felt slightly less than honored. As a group, they now had three keys that had not been used. The Jupiter key, which had been found in the operating room. The Saturn card, which had been found in the kitchen. The Earth key, which Lotus had just handed to Junpei. Junpei tucked the new keys into his pocket. Jun spoke up. The Jupiter key is supposed to be for the door at the end of that long, straight hallway, right? Yeah. If the map's right, then it connects to the central staircase. Then next to the stairs. Wait. They, they were the first words anyone had heard out of Clover in quite some time. Her face suggested they weren't going to be very happy words. What about door three? Look, you saw the map, right? It's the same as seven and eight. It just lead, it just lead us back to the big hospital room. There's no point in seeing what's on the other side of that door. There is a point. At least there is for me. There were tears in her eyes, but she glared at Seven as hard as she could, just the same. She looked very much like a frightened puppy. There wasn't a man alive who could have resisted those eyes. Seven looked everywhere in the room except at Clover and muttered and coughed apologies under his breath. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Snake might be on the other side of the door three. Clover nodded once. The next person to speak was Ace. Very well. I'll be coming with you then. I've had a nice long rest. Think it's time I was up and about again. So, Seven, you'll help me, won't you? Huh? Me? Junpei did the calculations quickly in his head. 4 plus 1 plus 7 is 12, 1 plus 2 equals 3. It looked like Seven was doing them too. At last, he gave up. Damn. Well, I guess that's how it's gotta be. So I'm going with you, huh? Yes, you are. Alright, let's get moving. And so it was decided that Clover, Ace, and Seven would discover what lay beyond door three. Okay, we're heading out. Be careful. Whoa, didn't think I'd be hearing that from you, Lotus. Don't let it get to your head. I'd be in trouble if the three of you bought it. The rest of us can't open the door nine. Ah, the truth comes out. Seven nodded as if the answer made much more sense and pulled the lever on the red. Okay, let's go. The door opened and Ace, Clover, and Seven jumped through it. Six, seven, eight. After exactly nine seconds, the door closed noisily. Alright, we should get moving too. Huh? Get moving? Where are we going? Everyone except Lotus seemed rather confused. Well, it would be a waste of time to just sit around, wouldn't it? Let me explain. I get it. We're gonna see if we can get anywhere interesting with the Jupiter key. Yes. If we're lucky, we might find Snake. They were at the end of the hallway, lined by individual hospital rooms. The Jupiter symbol was engraved on the keyhole. Alright, Junpei. Open it, if you please. Yeah, on it. Junpei pulled the Jupiter key out of his pocket and slid it into the keyhole. He twisted. With a nice, sharp click, he felt the door unlock. Alright. Ready, guys? Junpei's companions nodded. He nodded back, then slowly and quietly opened the door. Inside was exactly what he expected to see from the map of the ship's interior. They were in a tremendous hall, almost like a ballroom with a massive central staircase. Great, back to the beginning. You sure this was a good idea? What do you mean? Well, we already searched every inch of this room, didn't we? I'm asking you if there's any reason we came back here. No idea. No, that's a good question. Junpei looked off into the distance thoughtfully. Lotus sighed and shook her head. 
I can't believe this. You guys followed me here, but you don't even know why? Junpei, you've got the other... You've got the solar system keys, don't you? He did. He pulled them out. The Saturn key card. And the Earth key. Junpei didn't see what they had to do with anything, though. Both he and Santa were completely lost. Fortunately, Jun took pity on them. Don't you remember the elevator? On sea deck where we are now, there was a big elevator behind the stairs, remember? And next to the elevator, there was a card reader with the Saturn symbol on it. And on A deck, on the door to the left, there's a keyhole with the Earth symbol on it, I think. So the two keys that Jumpy has should let us use the elevator on, and the door on A deck, huh? Yes, that's right. June smiled, pleased with herself. So did Santa. All right, I got it. Let's get started, then. What do you say we split into two teams? Lotus and I will search the Earth one, so you two can search Saturn, all right? Sounds good. Junpei handed the Earth key to Santa. They decided that their initial search should be brief, only ten minutes. They'd meet back near the staircase once they were done. Junpei and Jun headed for the elevators. Sure enough, there is a card reader bolted to the wall next to the left elevator. He lined up the Saturn key card and swiped it through swiped it through the reader. A light on the upper left corner blinked to life. Great. Looks like it's working now. Alright, now how do I call the elevator? There's a single button on the right of the elevator door. On the button was an, the upside down triangle, the universal symbol for down. There didn't appear to be an up button. Junpei pushed it. Didn't have much of a choice. It... it opened! Look, Jumpy! Jun's voice was excited, but Junpei could hear a tinge of anxiety. Sweet, it opened! Let's get going! He grinned at Jun and stepped toward the open door. As he was about to set foot in, he felt a hand on his arm. W w wait What? I-I-I'm not really... Uh... I just... Oh, gosh. Junpei was at something of a loss. What could she possibly be so frightened of? Jun was probably afraid of... So the bottom one is the correct answer, but... Uh, the top one here leads to a funny scene that people would get mad at me if I skipped over, so... Being locked up alone with a boy. After a little thought, Junpei decided that she had to be nervous about being locked in, up in such a small place alone with a boy. In a way, it was kind of cute. Very demure, you could say, he thought. Still, even though it wasn't exactly roomy in the elevator, they weren't going to be pressed up against one another. At least they didn't have to be. Still, it was making her nervous. Junpei couldn't help but think how innocent she was. Come on, let's go. Again, he stepped toward the elevator. And again, he felt himself restrained. I said, wait a minute. Why? Aren't you afraid, Jumpy? Afraid of what? Well, I've never... You know... She'd never been in an elevator with a man alone before? Even so, she still seemed awfully alarmed. I might... get wet. What? D down there, I'd get soaking wet. Well, I mean, of course you would. That's the way it works. I mean, I've never heard of anyone getting soaking wet somewhere else. That's... that's true. You... don't mind? Mind what? Getting... wet? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I think I'd probably, you know, like it. Gosh, Jumpy, you're so brave. <laughs> really? I mean, I kind of think any guy would do the same thing, you know? What happens, happens, right? If you get the chance, you've just got to go for it. And that's what a man's supposed to do, I guess. Y you're so cool, Jumpy. I really admire you. Uh, that doesn't really seem like the sort of thing you ought to admire someone for. I'm... I'm really scared. Y yeah I mean, like you said, you've never... done it... before. Yes, so I don't think I'll be able to last very long, 
and then it'll be over. Uh, over? Yes, I'll go to heaven. Heaven? It feels kind of like you're floating in space and your mind gets all fuzzy, like when you pass out. At least, that's what I've heard from people who have experienced it. Ah, uh, yes, I've heard that too. Although, I don't think the same thing happens to guys. What? Huh? But, it would happen to men too, wouldn't it? It would happen to anyone. Once it gets into your body, the same thing happens to everyone. Well, I mean, usually it doesn't go inside the man. I mean, generally. Yes, it does. Well, eventually it will. It's not like you really have a choice. Your body will force you to swallow some of it eventually. What are you trying to do to me? <laughs> Nothing. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just saying that that's what happens. It's a psychological reaction to what you're experiencing. Was, was that really how it happened? It occurred to Junpei that perhaps that was how it worked. Perhaps he'd been mistaken all these years. Had he misunderstood life so gravely? The thought terrified him. Jun seemed to be entirely oblivious to Junpei's mounting confusion and terror. I know most men probably have larger lungs, but even then I don't think you could hold your breath for 20 or even 10 minutes. Eventually you're just going to have to breathe and then the water would get to your lungs. Once that happens, your body won't be able to get oxygen anymore and you'll start to feel that floaty feeling as you pass out. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Junpei understood. He understood what Jun was trying to say, and why she was so scared. Yeah, you're right. It wouldn't vet last very long. See? She was afraid that the only elevator button pointed, pointed down. That meant, of course, that the elevator couldn't go any higher than the floor they were on. As he thought about it, Junpei realized he hadn't seen the elevators on A or B decks near the central staircase all of which meant the elevator could only convey them to be the lower decks. And the floor below the one they were on, D-deck, should be completely submerged. That meant... Hey, wait a minute. This elevator came up from somewhere under us, right? Um, well, yes, I guess it did. It didn't open right away after you pressed the button. There was a motor noise, like it was moving, and then it opened. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, take a look inside. Junpei jerked his head toward the interior of the elevator. It's not wet at all, is it? The walls and even the floor are totally dry. Oh, you're right, they are. She looked around the elevator, slightly embarrassed. Well, let's test it. Test it? Yeah, watch this. Junpei put one foot in the elevator and bent around the corner of the door until he could see the floor buttons. There were only two, E and C. He pushed the E button and jumped out of the elevator. The door slid shut and they heard the grinding of the motor as the elevator car moved down. A few moments later, they heard the sound of the elevator door grinding open several floors below. Junpei nodded to Jun and pressed the elevator button again. A few moments later, the elevator returned. The door slid open, and just as Junpei had expected, there was no water to be found. See? Junpei couldn't resist puffing out his chest just a little bit. Jun, however, still looked confused. What does that mean? How can E-deck be safe if the D-deck is full of water? Well, here's what I think. The elevator shaft and E-deck must be watertight and separated from wherever the, the ship's been punctured. Here, let me show you. He pulled out his notebook and pen and sketched out a rough illustration. I see. So is that why the ship hasn't sunk? The shape, the shape of the inside keeps all of it from filling with water? Yeah, I think that's what's going on. Junpei continued talking as he closed the notebook and slipped it back into his pocket. So I'm gonna go down and check it out. You stay here, alright? Um, but... Come on, just do it, alright? He gave Jun's shoulder a reassuring squeeze, then hopped onto the elevator. He pushed the E button and the door began to close. 
June looked worried, her eyes darting back and forth as if she was trying to make a decision, when suddenly... Uh, I'm coming with you! Huh? At the last possible moment, June dashed forward, turning sideways just in time to slip through the gap between the closing doors. Junpei jammed his finger against the open button. But it was too late. The door had shut. He and June were in the elevator, and it was headed down to E-Deck. He was so surprised by June that he didn't even have time to think about what awaited him on E-Deck. The elevator stopped and the door slid open. And they stepped off onto the floor outside the elevator. Nothing seemed especially unusual. No fish going about their fishy business or jellyfish floating lazily through the water. There was, however, a blowfish, or at least something that looked very much like one. June's cheeks were puffed out, and her mouth a tiny, intense frown. Mmm. Oh, knock it off. It's just like I thought. This part hasn't been flooded. Come on, just look around. There's no water here. June looked... June looked around nervously, then <sighs> exhaled. You're right, it's not flooded at all. See? But there's a whole lot of water. Yeah, right on top of us. What's going to happen if the ceiling breaks? Junpei thought about that for a moment. Well, we'd probably get really wet up there. Huh? At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can once we are done looking around here. Lotus and Santa might already be back. Okay, good idea. Junpei glanced around the room they'd found themselves in. The first thing he noticed was a set of thick iron bars. They ran the length of the room, separating the left elevator from the right one. Well, we can't go over there. Right. And then perhaps... In the corner of the room that housed the elevators, Junpei found an opening. He walked up to it and stuck his head around the corner. A long, straight hallway stretched out in front of him. That door at the end of the hallway! There's something written on it! Yeah, let's go have a look. Junpei and Jun set off down the hallway at a brisk clip, somewhere between a run and a jog. Before long, they found themselves in front of the door. On it was a number written in bright red paint. Six. I knew it. This is a numbered door! And indeed, there was a red bolted to the wall right next to it on the door. Of course, with only two people, there wasn't much they could do with it. Alright, let's head back. Yes! Junpei and June turned and headed back to Sea Deck. On their way back, Junpei noticed a map on the wall. As it turned out, it was a burnt map of the ship's interior for E Deck. Huh. So you guys found door one. They'd met back up with Santa and Lotus who had explained what they'd found. Apparently there was another numbered door on A deck, just like the one on E deck beyond the door that the Earth Key opened. According to Santa and Lotus, there was a one on the door. All told, they discovered two new doors, the sixth door and the one door. It is interesting that E deck wasn't flooded. Lotus was quiet for a moment, lost in thought. Well, we don't really know if all of the e if all of E deck is safe. We only checked the area around the elevator. Even so, it's still very interesting. You said the six door was there, right? Yes, and that means Zero planned all this out, even the sinking. That would have meant some pretty serious remodeling of the ship's interior. It's pretty mind blowing when you think about it. Yeah, I wonder how long it took. I can't even imagine how much it must have cost. It, mu it would have been a ton, that's for sure. Well, that does go along with what Ace was saying. The most reasonable explanation would be that this was done by some organization with access to a whole lot of cash. Yes, that does make sense. That thought made, made all of them go quiet for a moment. June bit her lip while Lotus sighed softly to herself, and Santa cracked his stiff neck and stared off into the distance at nothing. Um, I don't think that's a very good I don't think it's a very good idea to stay here. June looked up at Junpei with large pleading eyes. Yeah, you're right. Ace and his team might be back already. Well, June, Junpei and I should be able to open door one. Huh? You guys leaving me behind? 8 plus 6 plus 5 equals 19. 1 plus 9 equals 10. 1 plus 0 equals 1. Just kidding. Alright, let's go. 
Lotus's words were all the impetus they needed. Back to the large hospital room they went. And we'll, we will arrive there at the large hospital in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!